Welcome to Profile, the show that shares inspiring stories of ordinary people who are doing some extraordinary things in this world. My name is Robbie, and today's guest is an entrepreneur, he's a graphic artist, and he has a beautiful mind. Please meet Kemar Richards. Hi, I'm good. How good to have you on the show. Nice to meet you as well, right? Nice to have you, man. Yeah. Nice to have you. You have a compelling story, and I know you are a great storyteller. Yeah. Well experienced from Jamaica, right? Yeah. Now living in Canada. Yeah. We want to hear the full story of who Kemar is. And I know you have your own business. It's called Yardboard Custom. Yes. Right, tell us about your business. Yardboard Customs is a shoes customizing gig yeah. that I came up with. It was an idea to put like my artwork to shoes. And, right. I can, and I can see the, the importance of that in terms of everyone may be wearing a Nike shoe, but your Nike is different. Yes. Can you do it on any shoe? Can I do it on any shoe? Not, not every shoe can be painted. It's mostly leather or canvas material in terms of like Vans, mm -hmm. Air Force Ones, Air Force um, Jordans, yeah. most leather material shoes, right? right? Who do you find are your customers? Who normally want their shoes painted? You have people that have different style or different way of thinking. So that's like someone will come up with an idea like, oh, I don't. I want a tattoo, mm -hmm. right? But I don't, I don't like needles. What about I put a tattoo on my shoes? Let's talk about this skill of yours, your art. How did it start? It? Yeah. I was joining from when I was about 10 years old. I wasn't an artist naturally. Yeah. I was taught by someone. I just kept practicing. Now, me... Being a fan of this drawing, I never liked school. Okay. Never liked school work. So every exam or every test that we call it, mm -hmm. I just draw on the paper. I don't do the test. I did art in school. I went to Kingston Technical High okay. in Jamaica. Yeah. I did art in school. I got um, one in art, yeah. right? But I wanted to go to Edna Manley. Not Edna only to college. do yeah, Edna Manley College. Yeah. Not only to do visual art, mm -hmm. but also performing art. Very dramatic too as well, you know? Yeah, yeah. Right. Schooling in Jamaica is, is very expensive, yeah. right? You have to have like a good amount of money to, yeah. to do that, right? There's no like funding, low income people to have like to go to school, mm -hmm. like art school and stuff, right? Now, I used to do art, but I never like, I never like finish, finish my art. Like I'll do it mm -hmm. and I just leave it, yeah. right? I'll start and I just leave it. Yeah. Now, when I came up with the idea with Yard Boy Custom putting um, images on shoes or painting on shoes. Mm. It was me challenging myself like, oh, I have to finish it for you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that it was me challenging myself like, oh, yeah, I have to finish this for this person because this person is paying good money yeah. for what he wants. Yeah. Right? So that's how my art journey was. Now, you, you develop this ability to draw well. Why shoes of all the canvas out there? You have people that don't like to be in the same thing as someone else. Mm -hmm. I will have on a jacket, but you don't want to wear the same jacket yes. like me, right? Yeah. So, when I look at it, it's like, if someone is wearing a full white shoes, mm -hmm. and you put his or her face on the shoes, someone will look at them like, oh, that's different, right? Yeah. Where could I get something like that, right? So, that's how I came up with that idea, because I'm, I'm a lover of shoes, but I like different styles, yeah. right? I like different styles, so I like, oh... I'm gonna put something different on my shoes mm -hmm. that I can be noticed. No, you're, you, it turns into a business for you. Yeah, I made it into a business. Nice. Right? Okay. Yeah, I made it into a business. It's not it turned into a business, I made it into a business. I went to research about it because I didn't know that it was a thing. Uh -huh. Right? So I went and researched about it and found out that this is, is actually a thing. People literally do this for as a business. It's mostly popular in the US though. I'm thinking to bring this as a thing in Canada, okay. right? So I sat down and schooled myself, right. learned what I need to do, yeah. how long this will take, yeah. right? How much money this will make me. It doesn't really make a lot of money when you just start. No business of does. Of course. But it's something, as I said, to challenge myself to finish, mm -hmm. right? And I kept doing it. Yeah. I kept pushing it, kept trying to promote it, mm -hmm. right? So it becomes a legitimate business, right? Nice. So not only for that, Okay. It's like over the years, somebody, I can't say, oh, I did this. I did this one time in my life. Right? Nice. 
the original yard boy yeah as to why you wanted to inspire youths okay so you, you talk about your personal experience let let's talk about that at yeah. yard boy is actually a jamaican yeah yeah because as a jamaican you call a yard boy a person from yard right jamaican, from home yeah. right yeah. Yeah. in the america they would say homie yeah homie yes. right so we say yard boy Our so that's how i get the name mm -hmm. right no it was because my brother was killed. My okay. brother was killed in 2018. Right? 18? Yeah, my brother was killed. Sorry to hear, man. Yeah. I got a phone call. I got several calls. So there was a missed call. So I was like, why my sister is calling? Right? Yeah. And then one of my um, supervisor came and like, you need to answer the phone. Okay. So I answered the phone and my sister, they shot my brother. And I left work. Yeah. I went home where he lived, right? And I saw a lot of cops and stuff, right? And I just saw his body just laying there, right? Mm -hmm. it took a toll on me, like, very, very badly, right? Mm -hmm. Took a toll on me, right? So, like, after that incident, after he died and stuff, and we buried him and stuff, because of where I'm from, like, in the inner city, mm -hmm. Garrison, people say are the ghetto, mm -hmm. right? I was like, what can I do or say to most of these young men right so this don't happen anymore right mm -hmm. because most of these killers that i that that are killers that we know you know are kids that we grow with you know mm -hmm. are kids that we used to play with our stuff you know i can talk to these youths let them know that there's more to life than this yeah than this place that we're in there's more out there that they can see to right for yeah to aim for yeah. yes so I was, that was the idea, and then I was like, okay, I'm going to call my, my little program Yard Boy, because all of us is from Yard, mm -hmm. right? When it started, I actually left Jamaica, and when I, I left Jamaica, I mm -hmm. came here and I was still thinking about it. It was still on my mind. I said, mm -hmm. oh, let's, let I use my experience from here mm -hmm. and try to go back home mm -hmm. and try to teach yeah. some youth. It still can happen, you know. Yeah. It's not too late. It still can happen, right? Not only that it still can happen, do you still have the passion to, inst to become a motivational speaker? Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's a natural thing. I like to talk sometimes, you know. <laughs> but yeah. someone might see me and feel like, oh, we're, we're living the high life and stuff, right? But it's for me to teach him and try to make them understand that. Mm -hmm. It's not just about trying to live the high life. There's more to it, right? Hard work and dedication. Why did you decide to leave Jamaica to come to Canada? I'm not going to lie. Jamaica is a beautiful country. Mm -hmm. Right? But when I look at it, certain opportunities that we, are, we, we can have, we don't have it because of the system. Mm -hmm. As a lot of man growing in Jamaica, mm -hmm. people look at you as two things. It's either you're going to become a criminal or you're going to die. It's yeah. either you go to prison or you're going to die. That's how they look at it. So I wanted to leave Jamaica as well. But you don't want to be that statistic. No. I don't want somebody to look at me and, and judge me because of the way I look. Opportunity came. Yeah, opportunity came. And I took the opportunity and I left. Again, opportunity only comes once in a lifetime. Yeah. So when you get that opportunity, grab it. Grab it. Uh, right? You have to grab Yeah, run with it. Nice. Right? That's, that's my opinion. I don't know about it anyway. That's my opinion. All right, so now you are in Canada. Yeah. How is it? How has it been so far? How is the transition to Canada? Being an immigrant or living a different country, you learn a lot, mm -hmm. right? You learn a lot. Now, and you learn if you want to learn. Yeah. Because in a different country, they look at things different from where you're from. Yeah. Right. So it's either you are willing to learn. Mm -hmm. You are willing to learn, mm -hmm. or you are willing to um, struggle. Struggle. Uh, my wife used to drive me to work, right? Mm -hmm. Until I started taking the bus and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But if you are willing to learn, it can't be a struggle for you, right? It's all about learning, adapting, yeah. and making the system work for you. Yes. One of the things you told me is that right now you are doing three jobs. Yes. Yeah. Tell us about that and why. Okay, so I would call myself like a workaholic. I like to work. Mm -hmm. So the first year I came to Canada, mm -hmm. I started working 
start working at Amazon. Mm -hmm. Start working at Amazon for a while. Right? Then I'm like, oh, and still need something to do. So I started my shoes business. Me and my wife got separated, right? Okay. Now I moved out and I was like, Amazon ain't gonna cut it because I need a tire yeah. because when it comes down to winter, you know that <laughs> yeah. it's not a normal thing here. So yeah. I need that car. So needing that car or living on my own now, I have more expenses. Yeah. So I'm like, I need a second job. Mm -hmm. So I asked a friend and she helped me out, right? Mm -hmm. Now, she told me what I needed. She told me that, oh, I needed my level one in first aid. And I went for it. Yeah. Right? She told me that, oh, you need to apply for this thing. And I went for it. Yes. Right? So... That's why I'm like, it, things only become hard if you make it hard, right? right. Life only becomes hard if you make it hard. Yeah. As long as you want something, just go for it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. I went for my license three times in Canada and failed. Three times. But I wasn't going to stop because right. I wanted it. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted it. Right. So when you want something, and yeah. that's what, um, that's me. Yeah. Uh, one of my son's mom would tell you that Kemar is a very tunnel-minded person. He always see you in one direction. Yeah. So if I tell you that I want something, I'm yeah. going to go for that. You I will never stop until I get that. I just take it as a way it is. I just take it as a day at a time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Don't really put myself in that position where I'm, where I'm, I'm worried about what's going to happen next. No need right? to pressure yourself yeah. like that. Because it give you a, like a, a mental strain on your body, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're like, oh, I need this and I need that. You're a pretty young guy, would you say, right? Still a young guy, but with a lot of experience, life experience. Yeah. Now, looking, looking back, looking at your life, is there anything you would have changed or have done differently? I wouldn't change anything. Yeah? Honestly. I would go back and tell my younger self that, oh, yeah. me being here today is for a reason. As I said just now, I don't know how far this might reach, yeah. how much people might see this, yeah. right? So I wouldn't change anything, wouldn't change anything at all. Even the death of my brother, I wouldn't change it. Yeah. It hurts, but I think it happened for a reason. Everything, as I said, as a transition, it takes a step, right? Right, so it's either you're going to take it as it is, mm -hmm. or make the pressure or the burden of the world mm -hmm. comes on you, right? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't change anything. I'm fine with, with what the it is, right? That's very powerful, my brother. Yeah. Very, very powerful. Yeah. I'm going to respect that. Yeah. I'm not saying that if, we are, if life give you rocks or give you a hard time, mm -hmm. try to break the rocks and make them in pebbles, if you get what I'm saying. Yes. Right? Yeah. Every step of the way in life, you have obstacles. Mm -hmm. It's how you plan to get over the obstacles, yeah. right? Nobody can help you get over the obstacles but you, right? Yeah. Nobody can, can you put yourself in a position mm -hmm. where you is either you elevate mm -hmm. or you fall. I know listening to you, you, are, you have a lot of inner strength and that's what propelling you. Besides that though, do you have any mentor or people that inspire you? along life journey you have a lot of people you know mm -hmm. you, would be, you would be surprised that i would say even not really knowing you you inspired me as well mm -hmm. my sister inspired me yeah right yeah my dad yeah. right mom i friends i say i keep my circle small right yeah i keep my circle very small so i put people around me that can help me. yeah I always, I always think about that. But my biggest inspire, inspiration, inspiration yeah. is myself. Yeah. Yeah. People always say, oh, say, you know that you are full of himself mm -hmm. or he's cocky. Yeah. But I always tell them, if you are not full of yourself, who's going to be full of you? Yeah. So I'm the person that will stand up in the mirror and be like, you're doing great, you know? Right? Powerful. You're very, you're handsome, you know? Right? Yeah. He's the first that would do that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I don't need someone out there to tell me that. Or try to tell me lies about that. Yeah. If I can tell myself that, yeah. I look at it and I say to myself that, oh, you have come to Canada in one year and something, almost two years. And you have done great things. You have done things that a lot of persons that lives here have never done before. Yeah. So 
my biggest inspiration as well is myself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm inspired by myself. Yeah. Because I know I'm doing great things and I'm gonna still do great things. I love how you, you, you naturally, authentically just see it as it is. Yeah. You know, pretty it up, you know, you know, you know, tell yeah. people what they want to hear. Yeah. You just see it. Yeah. Love that. Like, because it's called growth, you know. Mm -hmm. People might look at me and say I'm young. My wife will say I'm immature as well, right? <laughs> but the more you experience in life, mm -hmm. or the more and experience now if you become that you do everything in life, you know, experience come with even you sitting here talking to somebody. So it's called knowledge. Mm -hmm. Right? And the more you listen, you will learn. What is your message to our listeners right now who are going through a lot of challenges in life, struggling, whether it's their environment, whether their life situation, you know, whether they're asking a lot of questions about life. What's your message to these people today? My message to everybody or anyone that is struggling or having a hard time with life. It is just life. You're always going to have struggles mm -hmm. in life. Mm -hmm. Without struggles in life, you will never learn. You're always going to have obstacles. Mm -hmm. You're always going to have burdens. You're always going to get up one day and feel like you can't do it. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. You're always going to feel like, oh, I need to give up. Right? But that is all on you. Mm -hmm. Nobody's telling you to give up. Or nobody's telling you that, oh, this is the end of the world. It's all on you. Mm -hmm. You, it's left up to you if yeah. you want to give up. Yeah. If you want to take on that burden. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And meditate. Always try to meditate. It calms right? the nerves. Yes. It calms Just it meditate. You some time to, to reflect. Because I'm telling you, depression is a very, very bad thing. You know? And if you make the way of the world depress you, you don't even know how far it will bring you down. Right? So, one of my messages is like, don't let anything bring you down. Yeah. Even... If this is bringing you down, let it go. Yeah. If this is stopping you, let it go. Yeah. Someone always say, if your left hand give, give you a problem, chop it off. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. heard it. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. This part of you is giving you a problem. Leave it alone. Try something else. Mm -hmm. If you find out that this is a burden to you, leave it alone. Let it, let it go. Yeah. You're always going to feel like you're going to get a fight, but it's you, your inner self fighting you. Because you can allow yourself to overcome anything. With when the, my brother died, mm -hmm. I felt like I was going crazy. I was going insane. I was smoking like crazy. You know? When I look at it, I was like, you know, I have to let this go. Yeah. Because if I don't let it go, it's either I'm going to end up where he is. Mm -hmm. He wasn't involved in anything. Mm -hmm. But he had surrounded himself with some people that wasn't in, in the right, right? Yeah, on the right path. Yeah. Now, when you surround yourself with those type of people, or with people like that, it is expected that things like that is going to happen. Right? Now, I said what happened was shitty with him, right? But when I look at that, right, it also gives me a knowledge of what, who you need to put yourself around. Right? Yeah. So as I said, for the burden of the world and your stress and you feel depressed and whatever, let it go. Just let it go. It's nothing to hold on. Thanks for sharing, you know. Well inspiring. Thanks for sharing and thanks for coming on to the show, right? You, this, you talk about wanting the passion of inspiring people. Today you have shown us that it's in you. You have it and go after it. Yeah. A lot of people out there want to hear your message. Share it. Yeah. Share it, my brother. And, and thanks a million. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Hope you find it inspiring. And remember, don't take life too seriously. You know? Be you. you know? Go after your dreams. Surround yourself with people who can help you to get closer to your goals. You know? And be the best you. We are here to support you along the way. And of course, you know, if you have any question on today's episode or any comment, please share it with us. And of course, Kamar, 
Again, we're going to share his contact information. Get in touch with him, whether you want to be inspired or to wear a nice pair of shoes. He's your guy. Or even to just talk. Or even to just have a conversation. Yeah. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next episode. Bye for now.